Yes, yes, people, welcome back to the MacBuy Channel TV. Welcome to a live reaction for a change. Thought I'd whip on and do a live one after that, watching that one there, the draw at Molyneux. No surprise, it's always a draw, isn't it, when we play Wolves. It is always a draw. Normally it's 1-1. Today it was 2-2. Two, two. Let's just uh, whack that light on there for you. And as usual, whack your comments in the live chat as well. We'll get through them. We'll start from the top, I suppose. And obviously, I've put Pope's Blunderer in the in the title, and he's in the thumbnail because that ultimately costs Newcastle the three points there for me. Um, Nick Pope, his decision making again is absolutely terrible. Really is. I'm not going to try and go into ramp all the day. We've got a point on the road. Listen, the players were tired. It wasn't easy again, the weather and all that. But at the end of the day, and to be fair to Wolves. They made life difficult for her. The fullbacks and the wingers caused us a lot of problems. But um, Nick Pope, it's just we'll, we'll jump straight into the thick of it and then we'll run through some other stuff. But since he's in the title and since he's in the thumbnail, we'll, we'll dive straight into that. For me, it's just not good enough, man. Why on earth are you catching? Not catching. Not catching. This is why I'm saying it. It, it makes so much sense to say catch that I, I, for a minute, I believed that he did. But he didn't. He punched the ball. There was no pressure around him whatsoever. And he decides to punch the ball instead of catching it. Wolves recycle the ball very well, get it back in, and uh, put it in the back of the net. But you just, I just knew as soon as he punched that ball, I thought that's gonna, that's gonna come back to home. With. Halloween sentence. Nick Pope had a horror show right there, and, and not even just that. Just at times where he's just in no man's land for the first goal as well. He's in no man's land for that goal. Wall well, he's a fantastic shot stopper. He really is. But it, there's no, there's no. Um, there's no what 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 we were looking for here. There's no um, mystery that we're looking for another goalkeeper in the sense that we keep seeing rumours linking us with the likes of Aaron Ramsdale and other goalkeepers, and it's because of his overall game, and it's because of his overall game that he can't get in the England team. I mean, Sam Johnstone is getting picked as one of the three England goalkeepers ahead of Nick Pope because Southgate knows that his distribution, his decision making, is quite embarrassing at times and and really. Reckless, he is reckless at times. Nick Pope, now he's been fantastic for us in, in spells, especially obviously last season in games. He keeps us in it with his shot stopping, but for me, he just makes us crap myself every time there's, there's a decision to be made, whether there's a cross that comes in, or especially again in the first half. Again in the first half, he comes out of his, his box, and I'm thinking, please, Nick, I'm begging you, don't come out of your box yet. And he comes flying out of his box, and then VR are checking for a penalty, VR are checking for a red. Uh, handball on, on someone else, whoever it was, and you're just thinking, why the hell are you coming out of your box there? And him coming out and, and punching it instead of crossing us has cost us the equaliser. It has. We we come away and we've won that game 2-1 there if it wasn't for Pope. Um, and don't get us wrong, listen, he keeps you in the game at times with certain saves and that, but ultimately it comes down to that. And you know on, on this channel for me, I'm not beating around the bush. I'm not trying to say things safely or whatever. I'll say it how I feel and if you don't like it, get yourself elsewhere. Not asked. I've always built this channel on honesty and I'm going to say it how it is. And for me, it was shocking. It is a blunder. He should easily catch it. He punches it and we'll lose the, we'll lose the three points, you know. Um, Newcastle, I've got to just give ourselves a lot of credit. I thought Neto went off injured and that obviously really helped us because he's their best player. He's their danger man. His pace was causing us all sorts of problems. Obviously, Burns on a yellow as well. So he goes off injured. Newcastle needed that break few little energy drinks here and there and just to, to regroup and we'll pick ourselves up from that and Shaw has a header wide with, uh, in the 80 odd minute and he heads it wide and then he howls thinking oh, that's the chance and it was it was a big chance um, Shaw could have won it there for Newcastle and Newcastle do very well I think the second half we took it too easy where we were sitting off too much we sat off too much in that second half invited the pressure which is kind of understandable listen you're 2-1 up away from home We've just played a few days ago. We're playing again in a few days against my United in the Carabao Cup. So we are obviously just preserving energy in a bit or trying to frustrate Wolves, trying to keep the ball. But um, we we'll wake up once Neto goes off and once it's 2-2. And there's only it looked like only one team were going to score there in the end, and that was Newcastle United. Whereas for 80 minutes of that second half, until the 80-minute mark, we didn't look like creating a chance at all. We didn't look like threatening. So we we'll woke up at the end. It's a shame we didn't get all three points. Listen, a point isn't a, a, isn't a bad result, but when you look at how hard our fixtures are that are coming up, not just obviously Champions League and Carabao Cup, but in the Premier League as well, it's, it's Arsenal next next Saturday, you know. 
So it's not easy, but um, we finished the game strongly. We had a bit of a lull in that second half. Wolves equalised. It looked like it was always coming, but we're gifted them out with Pope's uh, dodgy clearance. Um, we'll run through a few notes that I had from the game if I haven't touched on them already. And I can see there's about 50 comments I need to catch up with. So do keep your chats coming in. I will catch up with them before we sign off. And uh, drop a subscribe if you haven't already. What have I, what haven't I talked to? I'm going to get to Dan Goodman first, but I'm going to save that for the end because Dan Goodman, that commentator, is a disgrace. An absolute disgrace. If you're going to have an ex Wolves player on the commentary, you need to have an ex Newcastle player there. I want to see Shearer beside him. If we're going to have Goodman there, I want to Shearer there. Shea Givens in the studio. I want Shea Given on commentary. Anybody. I'll have anybody on commentary that represents Newcastle United. If, if you've got a Wolves representative there, how many times did Goodman have to say, oh, not, not being biased, but that wasn't a foul? Uh, in my opinion, and not, 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 not being biased, uh, that shouldn't have been given. Unbelievable. What a load of crap that was. Dan Goodman, that is that is mental how much he was hating on Newcastle. And then the other guy was chipping in a little bit. Now, half time was coming and I was thinking, how much of an agenda is there against Newcastle here on Sky Sports? What the hell's going on? This is appalling. It shouldn't have been allowed that like they were, they were tearing us at every chance. Obviously, they were trying to say that the, it wasn't a penalty for Wilson. It was a clear penalty. Massive, massively obvious penalty where uh, Wang Hee Chan takes away Shaw's legs. Referee makes the decision. It doesn't even need to go to VR. VR try and check it about 2,000 times to try and give it against us. They do give the penalty and then he's saying, nah, soft for me that. What's soft about it? What, what is soft about that? Chan gets no any other ball and swipes shot at the floor. Penalty. I, I couldn't get my head around that. And then other little things where he's um where he was saying that it, it wasn't a foul on us and things like that. Um, what was the one that I've got written down here? It was mad. It was absolutely mad. Um not to mention, you know, that the VAR checks that Wolves were having, the, the referees and that, they had a couple of VAR checks for handballs that were just never, ever handballs. They were never handballs. They were trying their best to give Wolves a way back in the game. They were pathetic challenges there. That You know, they weren't, they weren't uh, handballs at all, and thankfully they weren't given, but they were, they were clutching at straws trying to get that. Um, I thought I had it. Oh, there we go. can't remember who it was, but someone was yanking away at Dan Byrne's shorts and his shirt, pulling on his shorts, nearly give Dan Byrne a wedgie, nearly kegged him, nearly kegged Dan Byrne at left back, the Wolves player. But Dan Goodman on commentary, ex Wolves player, <laughs> soft that, didn't even do anything. What's going on there? What's he looking for a foul for? Nearly ripped his shorts off and he was tugging on his shirt at the same time. Not the only thing he nearly tugged on. Do you know what I mean? So, shocking commentary by uh, Dan Goodman. He should never be allowed to be on unless you're going to have the opposite teams having a having a spokesperson there for them as well, because it was totally, totally unbiased. It was a joke. Um, other things I had was that that was probably Kieran Trippier's worst game for Newcastle. I thought he was terrible. Absolutely terrible. He got a yellow card in the end. He nearly got two. Nearly got sent off. But Kieran Trippier, we all know he's been incredible. One of the best things Newcastle have ever made. We'll call it how it is. And today he had an absolute stinker. He couldn't pass the ball two yards. He was getting caught out time and time again. And yes, he's coming up against Cunha and the likes of a lot of pace and trickery. And he was just getting done for after done for. He was getting left again and again. Skills were taken past him. He was nowhere to be seen. So he was having a really bad performance. And his deliveries and stuff got better in the second half, I thought. You know, from set pieces, he started breaking up a bit. And he was dropping in the middle to try and make things happen. But... From his high standards, that was very poor standards um, by Kieran Trippier. He was getting caught out over and over again, and he was just giving the ball away countless times. It was bad, but Wolves wingers, fair play to Wolves, you know, they, they did cause us a lot of problems. Um, Cunha and, and Neto and Semedo as well, the dirty little bastards. He was quick, but he was also cheating. You know what I mean? He was hard to deal with. So they were dangerous wolves and they defended well. Listen, Dawson, he looks about 70 year old, but he was doing bits at the centre back for them. He was blocking everything because I thought we were making some good runs from midfield. The likes of Bruno and Joe Linton were making very good runs, especially more so in the first hour of the game. But then it was a weak shot, a weak finish, or that final pass. But um the midfielders, the midfield runners were doing well, but then the likes of Dawson were blocking and, and stopping us from really causing huge problems. But uh 
Apart from that, you know, we'll talk on the, the first goal. Then, like I said, Pope was in no man's land. Uh, after Wilson scored for us, which Wilson, brilliant overhead kick. What a finish that is. <laughs> but he had, an, he, had a, he had a horrible shot the first one. Scuffed his first chance, a bit like Dortmund. But fair play to him, rectified it with a with a quality finish. And like I said, Trippier gets out muscled for the corner as well, where they score and Pope doesn't know whether that come or go. Um, but I do want to shout out Fabian Shaw, who I thought was timing challenges to perfection. I thought he was having a really good game at the back and spraying the ball around nicely. Um, and then we'll finish off on the bench. Before I get into your comments, there's over 70 of them. Keep them coming in, I'll get into them. And there's 300 people watching, so please do just hit the like button and subscribe button if you haven't already. It is free. Thank you. Weak bench. Two keepers. Gillespie. I thought it was Keith Gillespie on the bench for a minute. And it's Mark Gillespie. Got two goalkeepers on the bench. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, with all them injuries, we are looking bleak now. The depth is not there. Well, obviously, we're getting tired towards the end. And uh, we didn't have any options. Willock was the only one that came on. I thought Livermento could have came on. Um, I hope we'll see the likes of Lewis Hall again next week, which I'm sure I will against Man United in the Carabao Cup. But that bench, it had, what, six defenders on it and two goalkeepers in, in Joe Willock. You know, no strikers. <sighs> wow. It was uh, worrying, to say the least, when you've got away trips to Manchester United and Borussia Dortmund coming up with home games against Arsenal. So... Let's hope there's no more injuries. Let's hope there's no more injuries. But I'll tell you what, I'll have a sip of my beer and then we'll get into your comments and uh, we'll round up the show. So let me go back to the very top of your comments and then I'll catch you. Actually, we'll start from the bottom and make our way up just since it may be relevant to what I've just been talking about. You might have been replying to some of the stuff I've been saying. Streaming, I'll kind of catch up with the, uh, any of the comments, to be fair. There's that many of them. I'd be wanting out if I was Tino. He can't get on in this game. I thought that exactly when Trippier was having a shocking game. Tino's there. And I think Tino would have dealt with the pace of Wolves a lot better. I thought he would have handled their fullbacks because Trippier was getting done for pace. Livermento was young, pacey, energetic. Especially when Trippier went to a yellow, I thought Livermento would at least see in the last 10 minutes. Surely he'll start on a... On Wednesday against my in the cup, why not push trips to right wing and Tino at right back? Something they could look at, especially with the injuries. Uh, serious work needed in January, says Vincent. Shaw was like a Rolls Royce, bloody outstanding. Yeah, well said. Will, uh, Will, he was absolutely unbelievable. What else we got? We need some investment. A lot of people are talking about investment in January needed. Very, very true. January can't come quick enough for me. And Bonnie Face, the striker that I want, scoring again today. I'm glad it's not me that was just thinking that trip you was there. And you know, a lot of people are scared to say it just because he's been captain and he's been brilliant and all that. Um, people don't want to let's see how it is. I'll praise trip at the hills like I do every week when he's good. But if someone's bad, I'll see how it is. It's not saying I mean, it's, we're just judging it's a match reaction. You know what I mean? Reac re well, I'm reacting. To the match I've just saw. I'm not reacting to the two years, 18 months since he's been here, whatever it is, you know. So tonight he was crap, and as Toon Toon says, um, you know, he thinks how he's scared to make subs. It it does look that way at times, like, and even Eddie Howe has been questioned about this in the press conferences, you know, are you sticking to your favourites and do you not make changes? And tonight it was a night where you think he doesn't want to take Trippy off because he is he scared of any backlash or what might happen, but you gotta take him off. He's struggling. Just take him off, you know? So I'm not sure if I was scared, but there is a lot of times where you question, like, why why haven't you made a change? So I suppose that is the question that needs to be asked, you know? Why, why haven't you made a substitution yet? How many signings do you realistically think we can get in January? I'd say we could do with three at least. I'd agree with three at least. Um, realistically, you think we can get probably one or two, probably two. I think we'll get two. I think we could do with at least three. I agree. I think we need another right winger. We need another striker. We need another centre back. And maybe another midfield. Well, we do need another midfielder now that Tonali's banned. So, yeah, I would say three to four, but we'll probably get one or two. Um, Maggie's happy with a the point. They didn't play Dortmund midweek. Happy with that. I hear that. I hear that. But at the same time, we want to finish top four again. But at least we didn't get beat. 
And then we were, we're still six in the league, so I, I don't count it as a bad result. It's just when you're gifting Wolves goals like that, poor punch, and you're coming close at the end. I don't know. Derek says we need to learn to protect the lead by keeping the ball and not going for more goals. We really were going for the win, to be fair, and I like that at the end. Wolves were worth a draw, at least could have and probably should have pushed on to win it. I would say a draw was a fair result in the end. Uh, like Curtis is saying, I would say a, a draw was fair because I think Wolves did create a lot of chances. They were dangerous. We had a lot of the ball, but they were letting us do that. And you look around, you think, where was the other clear good chances from us? I mentioned Shaw heading wide into the box. You know, Burn has a shot at goal, saved easily. Jordan, easy shot saved. Um, so, yeah, the draw was probably a fair result on reflection. Why no Livermento today, are people saying? Trips has been shocking the last two games. Intensity is the identity. I think we need some control and precision mixed in with intensity. Too excited. Trips looked knackered. Thought we should have brought off Trips at half time, says Nick. Aaron says Shaw was our best player. I agree. Shaw and Wilson for Wilson's work rate and the two finishes. You know, putting away a penalty, maybe the keeper. You know, he gets a hand to it, but should he, have, should he have got more power behind it? You'd argue yes, thankfully not. But his overhead kick finish after scuffing the first one. But I thought Shaw was brilliant today. Like, his he's, timing was immaculate and he was solid. And then he's spraying the ball about nicely as well. Livermento was the boy who get him in his right back. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing Livermento again on the uh, Wednesday night. I'm sure he'll start. I'm sure he'll make another 10 changes. I wouldn't be surprised if it was near enough the same team that beat Man City in the Carabao Cup. You know, there'll be a lot of changes on Wednesday night and there needs to be because what, three days later, I'll play Arsenal on Saturday at St. James's. Um, Again, more people. I'm glad people are saying this and, you know, because a lot of times I may get stick for calling out players they trip yeah, because he's one of the best. But again, we're calling it on this match. You know what I mean? I'm not saying he's shit because he's had one bad game. I'm saying, I'm just saying what I saw for the last 90 minutes and, it's good that other people are, are being uh, real as well. Definitely an agenda and commentary. Obviously, I was talking about Don Goodman, who was uh, being so biased to Wolves. It was shameful, absolutely shameful from them. Obviously, uh, ex Mackham as well is what people are saying. ex Sunnan and Wolves. So, a new, so listen, and also obviously for the Wolves' perspective, they've brought Goodman in. But against Newcastle, for, with a Sunnan connection... How are you going to have him on there, like? And that, but then have him on and not have someone who's played for Newcastle. And then, like I said, Givens in the studio, Chuck Given on commentary as well. I'm, I'm that desperate at one point. I'm thinking, bloody, get Jimmy and Jenna's from the BBC and stick him on. That's how bad it is. But you kind of have Goodman and Mackerman and Wolves bloke on commentary. And then, uh, you know, not have someone up there. Not have, well, ideally it would be Shearer, but obviously he works for Prime and that, doesn't he? Um, I just have two normal commentators on. Just don't have someone with a huge bias towards Wolves in a massive agenda against Newcastle. Some great comments here, by the way, Peter. Well done. Uh, Matt, it was the same on Talk Sport with the commentary. Let us know who was on Talk Sport. Shamrock Balls, good name. Um, but I'm not surprised. It's uh, <laughs> it's Talk Sport, so I'd, I'd expect nothing less. Um. Yeah, I see a lot of frustration lately. Obviously, especially with the Tonali news, people are, keep talking about. Oh, we spent fifty odd on on Tonali. We could have got Madison. We could have got whoever. It's starting to obviously Livermore and Hall are for the future, aren't they? But you'd think we would have saw a bit more of them now, especially with all these games and especially with how bad of a half Trips was having, and then him and Bain are booked, and you think got to come on at some point and they don't and it's especially Tino and it's it's strange but we'll see what happens on on uh, on Wednesday night in the Carabao Cup at Old Trafford but you look at it and you think Tino and someone mentioned it before you know he'd be getting pissed off he's not getting a chance and he will be thinking after how well he played against Man City man of the match remember man of the match against City in the Carabao Cup and he can't get a he can't get a sniff he hasn't. Came, I don't even think he's came and made a substitute appearance since then. Or did he come on against Sheffield? I uh, he came on. Again. But you know what I mean. We're eating it up. Somebody had to. You, you think to yourself. 
what's going on? What's going on? Great shout by Ricky. Obviously, a lot of speculation since the Tonali banning that uh, Newcastle iron up a move for Ruben Neves from the Saudi Pro League from Al Halal on loan in January. That would be a fantastic sign, and I really hope we can make it happen. Um, so many comments I could go through here, people, but we try and pick out the, the top ones as well, or any um, ones we can create a, a conversation out of. We have 10 right-backs and 8 left-backs at the club, yet Bain and Trippier never get a rest. Just seeing... That's right, those figures of how many right-backs and left-backs we've got. Seeing that out loud sounds ridiculous. And like they say, they never get arrested. It did feel like West Ham. Obviously, I was at West Ham and that one was 2-2 two -two as well. 2-1 two up as well, so it's a good comparison. Not being able to see the games out in the, the most... Frustrating thing for me is, and that's why I've put Pope in the thumbnail and Pope in the title because we do see that game out of it isn't for that blunder, that mistake by Pope. If he doesn't punch it and he just catches it, we win that game, we'll get the three points. But um, I wouldn't have minded, you know, if Neto or Chang or uh, Cunha go on a dazzling run and they score a great goal, and you think, right, fair play, take the two two, well done. But you know, we, we've gifted them the goal, man. And that's the thing, and that's the frustrating thing that Kenzie says, just not seeing out the, the, the win. You're 2-1 up away from home, again against Wolves, who I think are a good side. I think Gary O'Neill's a good coach. But if you want to be Champions League, you want to be even top six, you don't necessarily have to win there, but you don't have to give away silly goals. And, and that's that's what we did the night we shot with on the foot. I like you read Dan's comment as I catch your breath and a sip of paint. Well, I would let you read it if StreamYard would show it. We'll try and click on it again. There you go. Newcastle was slow today, especially in the second half. Didn't deserve the three points. Don't fancy our chances against Manu. Well, uh, it's going to be a completely different game against Manu. And obviously, we'll have the preview on Tuesday, probably with a flex from the United View. Probably make that one a live one, so make sure you tune into that. And it's going to be completely different because, you know, the team's going to change so much on Wednesday night. There'll be different players come in, just like they did against City. And I'm really looking forward to watching the Man United game tomorrow, actually, the uh, the, the Manchester Derby, see how Man U get on because they got that win in midweek in the Champions League themselves with a non saving in the last minute. So we'll see. There's a there's a lot of, to say between between now and Wednesday, but I think with our injuries and that, it is. I was very confident not man you out, and I still am. But I was more so obviously before these injuries, Tonali Bannon, and how we are generally looking uh, fatigued a bit. Uh, Eddie not bringing on. Livermento and Target, even Target. Yeah, I mentioned Lewis Hall because I, I like the young lad and I want to see him given a chance. And he cost big money. But I thought Mighty Target did well when he came on against Dortmund on Wednesday. You can't manage scared at this level. Pope is ropey. Popey is ropey, I would like to call it. Popey is ropey. Um, Eddie has had a stinker. See, is Aaron. Pope could have been man of the match. We just caught the fucking ball. Well, it could have been because, again, we, we know what he's like with his shot stopping. We know how good he is as a shot stopper. But in the modern game, not even just in the modern game, though, we're still catching fucking crosses 77 years ago. 100, 2, 3, yeah, forever. You've been catching crosses. So you're doing this crappy little punch out and you're know, flying out your box. You're not a sweeper keeper. It's not jumpers for goalposts. Just settle down. You're giving us mad anxiety every time you come flying out the box. Just calm down, Nick. Do what you do best. Stay in your goal and start catching the ball. Clear decision-making. And the shot stopping is amazing. But the distribution and the, and the decision-making is very, very scary. Halloween is around the corner, and I know it is, because Nick Pope has given me nightmares. Nick Pope has given me bloody nightmares. Pope needs replaced. New goalkeeper got to be the priority in the summer. Ooh, 
70 million down the drain. Matty on the two fullbacks. More points dropped. Says Robbo. I'm getting back to the start now. Getting back to the start of your comments. I'd say we could have lost if Neto hadn't pulled his hammy. We we definitely, definitely could have lost if Neto hadn't pulled his hammy. Um because he was about to shoot. And he was so dangerous. What a player he is. What a I would love to say in him, but I'm sure the majority Probably all Premier League teams would say that about him. You know, he's uh, obviously he's, he's on a hot streak now at the minute, so he's on fire at the moment. But Neto is a serious talent, very dangerous. Um, cost big money, wouldn't he? But imagine having him in a front three with uh, Gordon and Isaac that could ever stay fit together. That would be fantastic. But Neto, I hope he gets back. To, I hope his injuries isn't too severe for him. But it, no doubt, it did help Newcastle on the night, like um, because. We managed to have a break, a little recovery, a few energy drinks on the side, and regroup, and we were better after that. And, and Wolves weren't. They lost that cutting edge. They, they lost that spot on the break. Um, good afternoon, Kevin, from Florida. And that takes me right to the very top. So shout out, everyone. 350 people tuned in right now. We've nearly went on for half an hour. It's flew over. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. I'll get the last few comments in now. Um, wow, that's a mad thing to say. That was true from Tim. Obviously, they don't like over there in Germany. Newcastle are wearing their sports washing kit. That is crazy if they actually said that and they get away with it. Um, Neto was injury prone. AC Milan's keep what we should get, but don't know if we should do business with them. Says Joe Linton. One point is a fair result, I agree. Nick Pope needs an exorcism, says Shamrock Falls. <laughs> hey, bloody hell. Bloody, bloody hell. I haven't even looked at my phone so far. Give Pope a brownie on some Dutch courage. Well, this is what I mean. He looks quite like nervy and scared himself, doesn't he? He does look a bit nervy and scared himself. He does look a bit nervy and scared himself. Right, then what's the last few comments that we can go through now before we round off this live match reaction? It's been good seeing everyone that's tuned in. Good numbers, good luck, good amount of years tonight, and some great comments. Um, Lila Sells was looking to be sent off, says Joe Linton. Got to raise our game for Arsenal, otherwise we'll get hammered. Well, that is obviously the next Premier League game. And to be honest with you, that is going to be tough because of just the amount of games we've got as well. Arsenal is obviously always a tough game, very good side. But with the games we've got coming up and the injuries and bans and that we've got, it's, uh, it's going to be tough. Top four is not looking good. Be lucky to get top six. We're six out of a minute, so let's keep the faith. How trippy I played the full 90, I'll never know, says Jason. Um, the cells were solid again after, yeah, he was, he was decent again. The cells, like, to be fair to him, he's done really well since he stepped in. This and I was good when obviously Botman got injured, but the cells has done way better than what I thought he would have. Way, way better, so big him up. Um, Agree the commentators were awful and the ref was awful. Ah, the referee was shocking as well. Like Anthony Taylor knew it was coming. Our oh, passing lets us down, it does sloppy at times, like in it. Another centre back is a must in January, as well as a centre mid and right wing. Eddie Howe rotates the, rotates the midfielders, but never the defence. Well, when you spend 60, 70 million on the pair of them, you think they get more game time. Nice to have Willick back, says John. Good point. <laughs> well, this is it from Clue, in it? You see, you now watch Nick Pope catch three balls. Yes. Again, it comes back to the decision making, doesn't it? It comes back to the decision making. Who's going to play as a striker on. Uh, 
in the Carabao Cup, Wilson can't play again, he get injured. We haven't got any of that striker, so unless he had to play Gordon or Julian down the middle, it's going to be Wilson again, isn't it? It's going to be Wilson again. If we'd seen the games out, we are on 21 points. Chucking his uh, lineup in here for Wednesday. Debrafka, Livermento. Remember, Pope played against City as well, didn't he? Because we made 10 changes, but he kept Nick Pope in there. I think Debrafka deserves his chance. He's sitting on the sidelines. I think he deserves a chance. Like Livermento, Kraft, Dummett, Target Hall, Miley, Willett, Gordon, Wilson, Ritchie. I'll do my uh, predicted lineup or something in the preview close at the time. But as they've put as well, there's a lot of changes that will be had. Um, Ashworth needs to answer questions. Eddie didn't sign them. Says Ian. Fair enough comment. Uh, fans finally waking up and questioning signing six months later. Eddie needs to play the other keeper as Pope was absolutely dropping howlers. People talking about like Eddie Howe being uh, too loyal to players. One or two more comments. Peter Drury is the best commentator. He is absolutely unreal. He's working for NBC in America. Um, let's go up. So many comments. Big up everyone for the comments in the chat. People again just questioning the fullbacks. Why aren't Hall and Livermento playing? We paid that much money for them. Why isn't how substituting Trippier? This will seem like a good point away from home, says Luke, in the long term when we qualify for Europe eventually, he says. If StreamYard ever loads it for you, yeah, there we go. We should go for Ramsdale in the summer, says two and two. And that's one for another video, I think, and one where we'll really discuss the uh, transfer targets. But for me, I think it's a matter of time before we do get a new goalkeeper who has got better overall play as a goalkeeper. I know in the modern game. Fair waves are going off. That's next weekend. Uh, what are you doing that for? Why, why do we not buy quality in the summer? Serious work in Jan. There we go. I've caught up with speed, so I'll get that down to the last couple of comments now. Uh, John's having a late night here in Dubai. I tell you what, I wish I was in bloody Dubai having a late night there, sitting here in Newcastle, pissing down rain and a uh, fireworks gone off. Enjoy the kit, mate. We need a third striker as well, says Kai. We certainly do, like. We certainly do. Right, one or two more, and then we are signing off. I'm going to go and watch the uh, madness tonight. That is Fury and Garnu. See what happens there. Money, I trust Eddie, but not the door. There you go. Jazz Andrew. And great to see everyone that's tuned in. Over 300 people tuned in for this live Good few hundred years in throughout the whole 35 minutes that we've been going for. So please do subscribe and like if you haven't already. Um, as we are going to sign out now, I think. Is there any other good comments at the end? Just may not get a look in our midfield problem. So is Taylor used toxic. Well, he was unbelievable in pre-season money. So maybe he does. Does maybe make a surprise start on Wednesday, potentially. Now that Tenali's out. Um, I see Stephen there as well saying bring May on against Man U. Jackie's saying we should sign Donnarumma, who obviously played in letting four for PSG against us, but obviously he is a quality Italian uh, goalkeeper. Right then, I have seen all of your comments. People uh, appreciate every single one of them. I think that will do from tonight's live reaction. We have went on for a while, but as always, when you are in the chat, with some quality crack, I'll keep it going. But there it is, Newcastle have drawn away to Wolves. All in all, a good point, good result, but it should have and could have been better if it wasn't for a Pope mistake. But there we go.
There we go. We're going to Wednesday, Carabao Cup. Make sure you stay tuned to Mike by Channel TV. We're building up that game. I'll be there at Old Trafford on Wednesday as well. So make sure you don't miss the video. Hit subscribe. Give this video a like. Keep dropping your comments in there. I'll come back then once the video is published to everyone that couldn't watch it live. And enjoy the rest of your weekend, people. See you on the next one.